Hey guys, Mrs. B here. So, um, this is going to be your video lesson for Tuesday, March 24th. Um, today we're not learning anything new, we're just going to practice some of the skills we did in the last two lessons on linear regression and exponential regression. So hopefully you guys will get to see the difference between the two of them. Even though you've done them already, we're just going to do two problems. One linear regression problem and one exponential regression problem. So first to start, linear regression versus exponential regression, okay? We're going to look at a difference between both of them. So in linear regression, okay, the equation of our line is y equals mx plus b. Okay, and remember, our m stands for our slope. And our B represents our Y-intercept, okay, where it crosses the Y-axis. Our GeoGebra command, which we'll look at again in a second, even though you've done this, is fit line. Okay, that's what you type into GeoGebra when you want to do a linear regression. Okay, and when we look at the graph of a linear line, we know linear stands for straight. So if I look at these scatter plots with all these dots all over, we can see that this is a straight, almost a straight line. It's going in a positive direction, so it's a positive linear line. As opposed to this one, okay, it's going in a straight direction again, only it's going in a negative direction. Now when we talk about exponential regression, Okay, we have a different formula. We use the formula y equals a times b to the x. Okay, our a in this case represents our initial value. Our b represents our rate. Okay, how fast is it either growing or decreasing? And x represents the time, okay, over how many years or months um, is, it, is it growing. And if we want to do exponential regression in GeoGebra, our GeoGebra command is going to be fit growth. Okay, we all saw this um, in the last lesson, yesterday's lesson. So if we look at a graph of an exponential uh, function, okay, we should see sort of like a curve to the graph or a curve to the line, okay? So this one starts to curve in a positive direction as opposed to this one that starts to curve in a negative direction, okay? Exponential graphs are not straight. So let's look at an example of a linear regression again, okay? Very similar to what we've already done. We're just going to practice it. So it says, Omar has a piece of rope. Each time he ties a knot in the rope, he measures the new length of the rope. The data he collects is listed in the table below, okay? So think about the rope. Every time you tie a knot in the rope, the length of the rope is actually decreasing, okay? You're, you're losing rope every time you tie a knot in it. So part A says, write a linear regression equation for these data points, round to the nearest tenth. As soon as you see that, you're gonna go right to GeoGebra, okay? Write a linear regression equation, GeoGebra will do it for you. So I'm gonna go into GeoGebra. And I'm gonna start to type in my points. No matter what, before you can do anything, whether it's linear or exponential regression, you have to type in your points and you must create a list. So I'm going to type in my points. Oops. OK, 
okay, there's my points. I don't see them on the graph, so I have to go to the mechanical symbol, zoom to fit. Up oh, there they are. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to create my list. I go to circle triangle, and down to the green list. I take my finger and I drag so that I have a shaded box covering all the points, and let go. List L1 is created, so I'm going to go back to my calculator. I'm going to go down to the next line, and I'm ready for my linear regression. So, I'm going to go to dot, 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 and I'm going to type in fit growth. That is our GeoGebra command, or sorry, fit line. That is our GeoGebra command for linear regression. And I'm going to type in L1, because that's the list I'm using. So, immediately it gives me my equation. Okay, I'm going to write that for my, linear, for my linear regression equation. That's the answer to number one. So I have negative 5.3125x. Let's make sure I have that right. 3125x minus 0.625y. equals negative 62. Okay, and it wants it to the nearest tenth. Remember, the tenth place, if our decimal is here, okay, I have the tenth, the hundredths, the thousandths. So I'm going to go to the nearest decimal place, which is my first decimal place, the tenths, okay? And I'm going to ask myself, five or above, give this three a shove? Nope, one is not greater than five, so we leave it alone. So I have negative 5.3x. Minus 0. Here's the nearest tenth place, so I ask myself, Five or above, is that two five or above? No, it's not, so we don't give six a shove, we leave it alone. Equals negative 62. 62 does not have a decimal, so we leave it alone. This is my answer, okay? This is my linear regression equation. B, find the correlation coefficient and state the relationship of the correlation. Round to the nearest tenth. Okay, remember, the correlation coefficient just tells us how close together the dots on the line are. Okay, or the dots on the graph are. How, how closely related are these dots? So uh, don't get rid of anything. Don't clear anything until we're all done. I'm going to go down to another line. I'm going to go to dot, dot, dot. And I'm going to start to type in correlation. Up oh, there it is, correlation coefficient. Okay, I type L1 again because I'm still using my list for L1. Enter. There's my correlation, correlation coefficient, 0 0.9970. You don't have to write down the whole thing. So, correlation coefficient equals 0 0.9970. It wants it rounded to the nearest tenth again. So, I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, one decimal place in. Five or above, give it a shove. Well, nine is greater than five, so I have to give this a shove. Now, nine plus one is actually ten. So it actually, okay, is ten with the decimal being in between it. So really, my answer is one. Okay, or 1.0, whichever one you prefer. They're the same thing. So 1.0, remember, any the correlation coefficient is going to be anywhere from one to negative one. The closer we get to one... Okay, the stronger the positive relationship is. The closer we get to negative one, the closer the the stronger the negative correlation is. Okay, anything between like zero is a poor correlation, bad weak correlation. So remember, we have one. I'm gonna say zero negative one. So this is a strong positive correlation and strong negative correlation if we have if you ever get zero this is no correlation 
Anything in between could be closer to a strong, or as we get closer to zero, we we turn into weak. So weak negative, or sorry, weak positive, weak negative. Okay, so since we are at one, we have a strong positive correlation. Okay, and that's my answer. So this is for a linear regression example. Okay, if, again, if we look at GeoGebra, the line of this linear graph is straight. Okay, last example. Exponential regression example. A box containing a, th a thousand tokens is shaken, and the coins are emptied onto the table. Only the coins that land heads up are returned to the box, and then the process is repeated. The accompanying table shows the number of trials and the number of coins returned to the box after each trial. Okay, so really, the words just tell you a whole bunch of like da-da-da-da-da-da. This is what, this table is the information that we really care about. It says write an exponential regression equation. Okay, as soon as you see that, you go right to GeoGebra. GeoGebra will do all the work for you. Okay, rounding the calculated values to the nearest thousandth. Okay, remember, the thousandth is one, two, three. Here's the thousandth. Hundredth and tenths. Okay, so we go to GeoGebra. I'm going to clear everything now. We're starting a new equation. I'm going to type my points in. Remember, before we can do anything with regression, whether it's linear or exponential, we have to type in our points and we have to create a list. So I'm going to type in my points. Okay, I've, I've entered in my, my data points. Now I need to see my data points on the graph. So I go to the mechanical symbol, top right hand side, zoom to fit. Now I can see all my points. Okay, I'm going to create a list, go to circle triangle, down to the green, create a list. And again, I'm going to drag my finger across the whole thing until every point is highlighted and let go. Oh, L1 list is created. Good. Go back to your calculations. There's your list. Now that I have my list, I can start to do my exponential regression equation. So I'm going to go to dot, the gray dot dot dot, and I'm going to type in fit. And we're using for exponential, we're using fit growth. Linear was fit line, exponential is going to be fit growth. And I type in the list I want to use, L1. Up, oh, and there's my line. Okay, look, we can see that it's an exponential line because it's a curved line. Now, unlike linear lines, it doesn't just give us the equation as easily as we'd like to see it. Okay, I don't know why GeoGebra is like this, but it's not as easy as it should be. So I click the line. I go to dot, dot, dot. Set caption style, hidden. Name and value. And this time it actually appeared on the top. I don't know why it's appearing on the top, but there it is on the top. F of X equals uh, 1018.2839 times 0.5968 to the X power. So I'm going to write that down. That's my equation. So we have 10. I'm going to give myself space here. 10, 18 point... 2839, you could just put a couple decimals, times 0.5968 to the x power. Okay, now it wants it to the nearest thousandth. So 
three decimal places in. One, two, three. Thousandth. So I'm going to go and I count after the decimal. One, two, three. I ask myself five or above. Give this number a shove. So because nine is above five, we make the three a four. We shove that number up one. So it becomes 0.2. 284 times. Now we're going to do the same thing. Let's round. 1, 2, 3. If this number is 5 or above, we give this number a shove. So 8 is above 5. So we shove this number up 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. So 0.597 to the x power. There's your equation. This is your exponential regression equation. Okay, we've answered the question. B, explain how you know if this represents ex exponential growth or exponential decay. Now, we've done this before. We've talked about exponential growth or decay. Remember, okay, when we look at growth, growth was y equals a times 1 plus r to the x, where decay was y equals a times 1 minus r to the x. The only difference was the plus and the minus. So I look inside my parentheses for my equation, and I notice that number is less than 1, 0.597. So less than 1 would be decay. If it were greater than 1, it would be growth. So we know that this is decay because 0.597. 597 is less than 1. And actually, I'm going to give, my, write, give myself some space here. I'm just going to rewrite exactly what I wrote. It also wants to know, what is the percent change? Meaning, what is that percentage? Well, I'm going to take both of my highlighted things. I'm going to take 1 minus R and 0.597 and set them equal to each other. And I'm going to solve for R. So subtract 1, subtract 1. Okay? Negative R equals 0.579 minus 1. going to give you negative 0.421. Divide by negative 1 on both sides. R equals 0.421. Now, we need that as a percentage. So remember, if we take a decimal and we change it to a percent, okay, we move the decimal place two places to the right. One, two. So really, this is 42.1 percent decrease. So it's decreasing at 42.1% over time. Now we can also find the correlation coefficient for an exponential graph, the same way we do it for linear. So C says find the correlation coefficient and state the relationship. So I'm going to go to my GeoGebra. Don't get rid of anything. Go to your input, triple dot, correlation coefficient. We're using the same list, L1. There is my correlation coefficient, so negative 0.9338. Round to the nearest thousandth. So one, two, three, that's the thousandths place. Five or above, give this number a shove. Eight is bigger than five, so we give this number a shove up to four. So really, my correlation coefficient is negative 9 point, oops, sorry, negative 0.934, okay? If we think about our number line from negative 1 to 0, I'm sorry, positive 1, 0, and negative 1, negative 9.34 is really close to negative 1. It's like right around here on a number line, right? So we have a strong negative correlation, and that's our answer.
Okay, here's the correlation coefficient. It's a strong negative correlation. All right, guys, that's it for today's lesson. It's just review from the last two days. Um, if you needed some extra practice, there is a short assignment. Um, it's really just filling in um, a table on the differences between linear and exponential regression. Again, if you have questions, you can email or text me, um, or you can video chat me during my office hours. Please, please, please finish the assignment, especially if you haven't done the last two on the last two days. Okay, now we have three total assignments that have been due, and for those assignments, you can do them right on a piece of paper. Um, take a picture of it, and you can either email or text it to me. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.